Good morning. My name is Ted Clauser, host of Win the Minute, Win the Day, the show that focuses on bringing hope to the chaos. Apologize for being a few minutes late this morning. Let me advise you, do not run Windows updates five minutes before you go live. That's a bad idea. But today we have a PCA teammate, David Witt, with us. David was born and raised in a small town called Bergman in Northwest Arkansas. After graduating high school, he came to Little Rock to study information services, information science at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. He began his career at PCA in 2017 and is currently serving as PCA's business solutions specialist. He enjoys spending time outdoors with his wife and their two-year-old son. He's oozing with positivity. I remember the first time I met him, he impressed me with the way he presented himself. And from that moment on, every time I am around him, I feel that same positivity. He's full of technical knowledge and he's outgoing and a great communicator. He's special and we're blessed to have him on the PCA team. So welcome to the show, David. It's an honor to have you. Thank you for having me. Well, let's just jump right in. What is your personal, what is your personal approach to waking up with a go win the day attitude? Uh, well, uh, in order to win the day, I usually have to start off with a couple cups of coffee, uh, or I'm not really going too far. Um, but uh, I, I, I try to approach every day with the mindset of uh, not what am I going to accomplish today or what obstacles am I going to get out of the way, but rather who am I going to help today? Um, because for me, in order to win the day, it's, it's you know the make sure people are taken care of, make sure people are happy. And I, I approach the day with that sort of mindset of who am I going to help instead of what am I going to accomplish? Good for you. That's a great approach. Well, you've been at just about every role here at PCA. How has that helped you develop into the role that you're in today? <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, in the summer of 2017, I started at PCA on the service desk. Uh, and that, was, that was fun. Uh, it was sort of a one-man shop at that point for PCA. Uh, we had only one person on the service desk and you, you have to learn everything. You got to be the jack of all trades. You, you learn, you know, industry standards, the best way to do stuff. And it's very rapid pace. Uh, very fun uh, environment to be in. But, uh, you know, from there, uh, I, I was able to see things from the service level. Um, after that, we decided, you know, PCA kind of expanded the way their service desk was. So I got to work with our team on developing some of those processes and procedures as we expanded our services team to one to two to three people. Uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful opportunity to kind of see things from that operational perspective. Um, so uh, after that, as I was transitioning from service desk, uh, to kind of help develop our service desk team uh, at that point. I was also, I also became a network engineer and uh, I really loved being a network engineer. It was uh, one of the greatest achievements I've ever done. Um, during that time, you know, I would go out, I'd meet with clients, make sure they're taken care of. But that's when I really truly found like the best way to uh, work with clients is, you know, learning about them. Um, and so, working in all those aspects, I was able to see things, you know, from the, the technical side, the service desk side, um, to the operational side, uh, how, how's the best way to take care of the client? How do we meet these metrics? Uh, what are ways we can develop and grow to do that? Also, you know, from the network engineer side, I was able to, this is the client's perspective, because I'm out there meeting with them. Um, you know, they're telling me their frustrations or, you know, some things they think we can grow on and taking that insight back to the team and using that to really develop and you just know, culminate uh, better ways to take care of them. It's just uh, all those roles kind of led me to what I do now. And, you know, it's like we can take metrics, see where we're at, what can we do to help people and just all encompassing. Yeah. Kind of basic business outcomes. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. Well, uh, you know, I think that you have a knack. I mean, you're very aware of what's going on around you. I think of times when you're like, Hey, we need to, we need to reach out to this client because they've got this situation going on. I just appreciate how in tune you are with the people around you. And I think that's a great quality. Well, absolutely. Uh, the other part of that too is, you know, you, you learn who is really the experts in what. And that's a wonderful thing about, you know, us as an MSP is we're able to have experts in each different area. And it's not always how was I able to get you there, but who can I get you that's right. in touch with to get you there? That's so right. that's the wonderful thing about being in almost uh, all those roles. Absolutely. Well, what's a memorable story that you can share when you had to personally go about winning the day? <laughs> uh, how about all the COVID? No, oh, yeah. I really no. think uh, I really think of the first part of COVID. You know, there's there's just such a high need for getting people set up for remote work or you know VPNs and. There's just everybody's like, hey, we gotta start working from home tomorrow. So um, 
it, it was overwhelming. Uh, so winning the day, if you're if you're thinking about it, uh, as in what are, what are all these objectives I got to get done? You can't take care of everybody in one day. So it's how many people were we able to take care of? How many people were we, were we able to get that sort of ease of mind to today? So uh, I definitely would refer that back to the beginning of COVID is make sure that people are have these. Hey, we're going to get to you. We're going to get you taken care of. Yeah. We have a way to do this. Just work with us. We got this. Mm -hmm. so I was challenging two weeks at first for sure, <laughs> because we had to really move everybody immediately home, not just our company, but the thousands of users that we manage. And so you were a very integral part of that. Well, you're so great at relationships. What do you personally think is so important about relationships? Oh, oh absolutely. Um, so when I think of relationships, you know, even in our field, um, a lot of people can handle the technical stuff. Uh, a lot of different companies do what we do, and it is with uh, you know it's growing market. Um, but the way PCA has always treated um, our our clients and the people who have their confidence in us is like family, and that sort of relationship has always kind of been uh, something I've wanted to have in an organization I've worked for. So um, you know, when I was a network engineer, we'd go out on site, and you'd always have like a surmountable things in front of you. you these are our tasks; these are things we're moving towards standards. But my favorite part was my very first five to 10 minutes near the visit, you know, yeah. how are the kids? How'd the little league game go? How was, um, you know, how is the trip with your grandkids going? Mm -hmm. You know, the, that relationship aspect and truly caring about your clients uh, in, in that sense is, is the best part of the job to me. Yeah. Well, that may or may not answer this next question. I'm not <laughs> sure, but which of the great IT core values resonates the most with you? Uh, well, why, why it might be a relationship is not, it's actually a trust. Okay. Uh, okay. Because uh, what is a relationship without trust? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, clients, uh, they, they put all their confidence in us when they, you know, they hire us or uh, even just something we pick up to do. You know, they want to trust in us that we're going to get them where they need to be, that we're walking their stuff, that we're taking care of them. And we got to give that, you know, that trust back to them that, you know, they're going to take us where we want to go as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, trust is integral on that um you know building that trust is first learning that trust establishing that trust and then growing on it is you know the uh what i think is the best of the great it yeah pop quiz is that the first t or the second t first no <laughs> <laughs> we might have to change it <laughs> Oh, here's the tea. <laughs> here's the tea. That's right. There you go. Well, one of the things I remember from you early on is saying it's a great day for a great day. What's the history behind that? Oh, well, I feel like uh, it's a great day for a great day to me is very similar to your go win the day mm -hmm. and the aspect of, you know, I'm going to make the most of today. Uh, there's something in every day that we can find and learn and do to make it a great day. So it, it's kind of switching that. What do I have to get done today into a, what can we do today and do really well to make this a great day? And so that, that's always kind of been in the back of my mind. I, I think I read that somewhere right out of high school. I was like, this is, this is a wonderful thing to live by because there's always something you can make out of a day. And so it's a great day for a great day is me saying there's some, there's some sort of win out there today. There's something I can go and do to make this a great day. And I uh, kind of live by that. So, yeah, well, I think that goes back to that positivity that we talked about. I mean, you're smiling, you're just a, a guy that people want to be around. So I appreciate, appreciate and value that. I actually might have botched the quote. It might have been, it's a good day for a good day. I can't remember. But okay. either way, we're going to make it great. Uh, I don't know if there's, again, I don't have access to the LinkedIn uh, convo today. I don't know if anybody's asked any questions. We're certainly there to field questions if they come up. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things that I remember... I don't, I think it was pre COVID um, when you had your son sitting up on his, or it might've been right at COVID. I don't know. He had the, the thing that we put on our social media where he was typing, was your assistant for the day. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, you're an amazing father. Um, and so what's a, I mean, just share one of those stories about being a dad that you think somebody listening could resonate. With. Oh yeah. So, so that, uh, that video is actually our very first week home from COVID. So, you know, at that point, Bishop was one, uh, Bishop was my son and he was a, uh, He's seeing me type on a keyboard. He wanted to play on dad's keyboard, but dad had work to do. Uh, so I built him. I had a cardboard boxes. They're empty switch boxes from switches I configure. So I built him his own personal little desk. He's over there typing, having a good time. But uh, it, it's it's kind of interesting too. If like your kid sees you like working, 
they want to do that too. So, you know, we had to, we had to get bitch of his own keyboard, his mouse, so he plays with it or something. And uh, I don't know, uh, being a dad's the, I, I feel like one of the greatest achievements I've ever had in my life. Um, I think, you know, that's your best friend, you know, you want to spend all your time with them. And then when they, you see them learning from you and they're doing what you do, it's just, it's a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, as your as Bishop grows up, the, I mean, my son's 17, the things that he says make you realize that the hard days are worth it. You know, get where you're at, you know, it, it's never easy to be a dad, um, but to push through, you're going to see that, that, that fruit and that reward from doing all that. So keep it up. Shelby, do we have anybody that's got any questions or comments? We do. Brian Mill says fun is a unique word to describe MSP service days. It'll definitely build character. <laughs> yes, yes. We love you, Brian Mills. Thank you for <laughs> always being such a huge supporter. Well, how do you personally unwind after winning the day? Uh, that kind of goes back to, you know, we were just talking about uh, having a two year old at home. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes home from school and he's just, or daycare rather, and he's just jabbering on, singing wheels on the bus, you know, and just taking that time right after work to just shut it all off and spend time with my family has always been my way to unwind. It's like um, from six o'clock, probably about uh, to nine o'clock when Bishop goes to bed, it's nothing but family time. Mm -hmm. You know, you just yeah. have, unless an emergency comes up, uh, you know, just dedicating your time to your family and your wife and just, you know, it's the little things when you have a kid that little. It's, 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 it's the little noises or the little tickles or the jokes or something. So that's how I unwind. I just kind of live in those moments to shut it all out and, you know, recharge for the next day. Because at the end of the day, that's what I work for. I work for my family. I work for my, my son to, so they have a better life. And that's why we're here. Don't live to work. Work to live. Absolutely. I, I get that right. I think so. Anything else, Shelby? Yeah, we've got another comment from Lee Rhodes. He says, relationships. Nobody cares what you know until they know how much you care. Relationships in the club. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and Shelby is always here every week, week in, week out. Uh, so you're hearing her for the first time. The show could not exist without uh, the effort and support that she puts forth. So thank you, Shelby. Thanks, Ted. Maybe we'll get you on the side of the camera one day. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, go win the day. Every day.